Good morning, fifth grade, and welcome to another edition of Screencast Matic 2016 with Mr. Run. Okay, so now you already should have um, completed the application problem, or you're stuck and you need help. Therefore, you're watching the video. So let's look at it. So we have Leslie has one liter of milk. Okay, what's the whole? A liter of milk. She drank drank one half for breakfast and two fifths for dinner. And it asks us how much of the liter did Leslie drink? Underline that twice. Because that's what it wants me to solve. So I know that it says how much did she drink, so we're gonna be adding it all together. So Here's my breakfast one, and she drank half of it. And we know we're going to add. And then my dinner one, and she drank two fifths. One, two, three, four, five. Eight. I told you, it doesn't have to be pretty. Let's we'll do this one. Those definitely are not fists. Okay, so we have two fists and one half. Well, now, if you remember the rule from yesterday, you split it down the middle, and then over here you're going to do the opposite. Three, four, five. So essentially what you're doing is you have a half, and you have two fists, and you're going to find out what half of two-fifths is. And you're going to find out what two-fifths of a half is. That is the reason why we do this. And by doing that, you're making them equal fractions. So now all we have to do is add it all together. Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is our denominator. And our numerator is the total number that are colored in in both squares because we added 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So she drank 9 tenths of a liter in a day. Holy cow, that girl drinks a lot of milk. Okay. And then our extension question, how much of the liter does she have left? Tell me 50 bucks. Here we go. Let's move on. Oops, backwards. Okay, so on your, welcome back, time lapse, personal wipe, whiteboard or your math journal. So we're going to be adding one third and one fourth. Um, what I want you to do first is we're going to um, look at the number without doing any work. Um, do you think if we are able to add this, will it be greater than one or will it be less than one? Think to yourself. Okay, well, let's take a look. So, think about it. One third is less than half. One fourth is less than half. So, one third plus one fourth should be less than one. And then we can always solve it. So if you add one third plus one fourth, you end up with four twelfths, add three twelfths. And that equals seven twelfths. And there it looked like they just did the, the rule of you just multiply the denominators and what you do on the bottom, you do on the top. Correct amundo. Let's move on. Let's take a look at this one again. So I'll leave this one here so you can kind of see it. So now we have a half add three fourths. Do you think it's going to be greater or less than one? Think about it for a little bit. What do you think? You're staring at me. It's kind of weird. Are you done thinking? Okay. So, 
we can pull this one up and just think. So a half is equal to a half. So if you had two halves, right, you at least have a half right here. So you have one half left. Three fourths is greater than a half. Because what is half of a three fourths fraction? Well, it would be two fourths, right? So we know three fourths is greater than a half. So I would say that a half plus a fourth would be greater than one. Here's our picture if we want to look at it. So a half, three fourths. See how three fourths is almost a whole? So when you put them together, it doesn't, you almost, you get more than, you know, you get four eighths and six eighths, which ends up being ten eighths. And then we can even check out this one. So a half plus a four, three fourths equals four eighths plus six eighths, which equals ten eighths. So that equals eight eighths plus two eighths, which is one plus two eighths, which equals one and two eighths, or one and one fourth. Cool beans. Here we move on to the next one. So let's try to solve this problem. Um, and I want you to express it as mixed numbers. How can we do that? Um, and we have to think about what a mixed number is. So we talked about what a improper fraction is. And an improper fraction is when you have something that does not look like a right fraction. It looks wrong. Improper. This is an improper fraction. A mixed number is when you have both a whole number and a fraction. One and one eighth. And a proper fraction would be when it looks like that. So you have a regular fraction, proper fraction, an improper fraction, and a mixed number. So a mixed number should end up looking like this. So what I'd like you to do is solve this problem. Let's solve this first one together. So we have four fifths. We'll go this way. One, two, three, four, five, and we're going to add it to a half. I love that. Oops. I love adding halves because it makes it so much easier. And my beautiful coloring skills. Beautiful coloring skills. There we go. So would you agree that I have four fifths and one half? So now I need to add them together. And again, it's as simple. I'm going to change the colors for you so you can see. It's as simple as being able to take what you do on this side and you do it on this side. Because in order to make them the same denominator, you can essentially just multiply the denominators, which is what we're doing when you're making a half of a fifth. And when you're making four fifths of a half, well, you're technically multiplying it, right? So let's make this. One, two, three, four, five. So now all I need to do is add them all up. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. So I know my denominator is going to be ten. And there's eight here. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So thirteen tenths. Oh man, how can I write that as a mixed fraction? Because right now, this is a what? It's an improper fraction. Okay, so you could do this two ways. You could know that 10 goes into 13 one time. There's three left over. 10 is still the whole, so it would be 1 and 3 tenths. The other way to do this is to decompose. It's one of the coolest things. So we're going to take this number, we're going to make it, well, what would make this a whole? Well, you'd have 10 tens, right? And what's left out of this number? 3 tens. Well, because 10 tens plus 3 tens equals 13 tens. So now we have 10 tens equals a whole, and you have 3 tens. 
So as a mixed number, it is 1 and 3 tenths. Fifth grade, I'm telling you, I was not taught this when I was a kid. It would have made my life so much easier. I love this method. Let's move on. So what I would like you to do is on this one, I'd like you to try to solve it on your own first. So pause it and solve it. Ready? Okay, good. Are you done? So let's take a look at it. So again, we have two thirds, and we're going to add three fifths. One, two, three, and we'll do this one. Four, five. I'm horrible at doing these sometimes. One, two, three. There's three fifths, and here's my two thirds. I'm gonna change my color. Oh, so let's add them together. So now remember, when you're adding them, essentially you're multiplying. Because what is 5 times 3? It's 15. So let's count how many we do. So if we do our fists, so fists 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now if I both count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Again, this is 5, and these all should be equal. So this should be 5, and this should be 5. 5, 10, 15. So I know my denominator is 15. So now let's do 2 thirds of this. So now all I need to do is add up all the ones I colored. And some of you are probably going to mess up because I noticed yesterday you didn't color all of the squares you should have. So maybe when you add, you're not going to count the squares that should have been counted because you didn't color them correctly. I'm not very good at coloring on this thing, but all of my squares are colored in somewhere. So let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So I have 19. And we can decompose this. And then you get, I can take the 15 out one time, right? I can get 15 out of 15. That's a whole. I'm able to decompose and pull that out. Well, what's left? Well, 4 15ths. So the answer is 1 and 4 15th. Oh my gosh. So much easier. Let's move on. Okay. Pause and do this one. Go. Okay. So again, colors are horrible. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I'm going to color three of them and I'm going to add thirds right and I'm going to have to color two of them so I have got two thirds now I'm going to change my color hopefully you've already done this and you have an answer so, and I'm going to do the same thing on this side which essentially, essentially you're just multiplying 8 times 3 and this would be 8. What you do on the bottom, you do on the top. So this would be 3 and this would be 3. Okay. So on um, this one I need to do it into 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 lines and that equals 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm going to make my line up here. See how I didn't color here? If I wasn't smart, I probably wouldn't count it. Okay, so now we just need to add. So I have 1, 2, 3. And I know there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So if I have 3, and I have an 8, so it's a 3 by 8, I multiply it, and your denomin denominator would be... 24. Now we just need to count how many we have. Well, I know that there are 8 in this, and there are 8 in this. I'm going to use my brains and say that 8 add 8 is 16. 
and I have a 3 by 3, which is 9. 9 add 16 is basically 10, so I'm going to add 10. You get 26, and I'm going to take one away, and it is 25. So now, again, we can decompose this. I can pull a 24 out of 25. And how do you get to 25 from 24? You add 1. Still same denominator. 1 and 1, 24. Did you get that? Good job. So let's move on. If you're on the problem set now, so you'd be um, with your book and have it open and work and pause as I ask. Go. So, pause, please. Pause. Okay, you should be on A. Okay, so you should have already done this. So look at this. Okay, so again, two thirds. And color two thirds. You're adding one half, right? So then, what you do on that side, you got to make sure you do with the other side. Okay, two thirds, and I'm going to do a half. I can tell just by looking at it that my denominator is six, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I can either just say that it's one and one seven, one and one six, because I know off the top of my head just by looking at it that six goes into seven one time. There's still one left, and the denominator always stays the same, so it's six. Or you can decompose. Then you get 1, 6 out of 6, and you get 7, oops, sorry. To get to 7, you have 1 left over, and the denominator is still 6. So, essentially, you end up with 1 whole, 6, 6 is a whole, and 1, 6 is left. Okay, do B, go. Okay, so hopefully you have already paused this and done it, so this will just be kind of a checkout. So we have three-fourths and two-thirds, well then I make thirds of my three-fourths, which again Mr. Runyon said is just like multiplying the denominators times each other, and you end up with a denominator of 12, there are three rows of four, and this one you're going to do fourths, one, two, three, which is four, and again it's 12, and now you're just adding it. Well, I can say that this is 12 and this is 12 so total there are 24 and then there are 7 missing which I would say would be 17 but I can always check okay so I have 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 huh extraordinary sometimes you're smart okay so again you can look at this and say it's 1 in 5 twelfths or you could pull it out and say 12 twelfths right and then have a 5 twelfths left. So with 12 twelfths equals a whole in 5 twelfths. Ta da! Good job. Alright, you should be working on. Go. Pause. And do D. Okay, so you should have already finished this one, and I completely have everything done this time. So you end up with a fraction of 5 tenths, which is half and six-tenths, which is three-fifths. And you end up adding them, you get eleven-tenths. If you decompose, you get ten-tenths and one-tenth, and then you end up with one and one-tenth. Ta-da! Duty, pause, go. Okay, so you should be done. So you should have gotten seventeen-fourteenths. Um, if you get five-sevenths, you cut it in half, it's like saying seven times two. So you end up with 17 fourteenths when you add it to a half. And then decompose, you get 14 fourteenths and fourteenths. And that equals 1 and 3 fourteenths. Okay, so let's move on to E, and I want you to do F. So pause both and go. All right, so we have again, oops. Okay, so you should have already completed these. Let's look E first. So you end up, if you make three-fourths of five-six and five-six of three-fourths, you end with um, the three-fourths being 
18 20 fourths and the 5 6 being 20 20 fourths. When you add them together, you get 38 20 fourths. And then if you pose, you get 20 fourths, 20 fourths, one time, and you end up with 14 20 fourths. So as a total, you get one whole and 14 20 fourths. Or if you simplify it, you would get 1 and 7 twelfths. And that's as just as saying that they're both even, so I'm going to divide both numbers by 2. Well, let's look at F. You have 2 thirds and 3 sevenths. When you add them, you end up with 14 21sts and 9 21sts. When you add those two together, as a, you get 23 21sts. When you decompose and you pull them all, you end up with 1 and 2 21sts. Good job. All right, let's move on to something fun. Solve the following problems. Draw a picture, write the number sentence that proves the answer. Simplify your and if possible. That means on this right here. Okay, 14, 24, they're both even, or maybe they're divisible by 3. Those usually are the other factors that help you out. So here we go. Penny used two fifths of a pound of flour to bake a vanilla cake. She used another three quarters pound of flour to bake a chocolate cake. How much flour did she use all together? Okay, so two fifths flour, three fourths flour. How much flour did she use all together? So essentially, you're going to be adding two fractions. Okay, so if you do our pictures the way that you were taught, so you do two fifths and you do three fourths, and then you make three fourths of two fifths, and you make two fifths of three fourths, because essentially you're doing nothing but multiplying the denominators, you end up with 23 twenties. If you decompose that, you're going to end up with one whole of a 20 20, right? Because you can get 20 can go into 23 one time, you get one full 20, and you end up with three. 20s. When you are finished with that, this equals one whole, and you're left with three 20s. But get in the habit of doing this. She's going to use one and three 20s of flour. Always write your unit. Excellent job. Let's move on. Oh man, is that it? Nope. Gotta hit the arrow, Mr. Runyon. Oh, we're done. Go work on your homework. Tell me you did this. You're still watching me. I'll give you 50 bucks. Go.